Hello, I'm Michael for GameWatcher.com and today with me is Christian from Fairweather Studios who are currently in development of turn-based strategy Ancient Frontier. Welcome to the show and tell us a little bit about your company and a little bit what the game is. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. Uh, so Ancient Frontier is a turn-based strategy game. Uh, I think if you like Star Wars or you like Battlestar Galactica and you always wanted to see that mashed together with something like XCOM or Heroes of Might and Magic, it's that's sort of the direction that we're going. So uh, our goal with the game is to make an epic turn-based strategy game focusing on fleets of ships battling each other. So, I, so the premise for me, I'm a big sci-fi fan. I'm a big turn-based strategy fan. So for me, it's like a match made in heaven. Um, what is it that you took inspiration from? What other games did this game take inspiration from? Uh, well, so I'd say a variety of sources. Um, one of the reasons why uh, we decided to make this game is because we wished the game already existed. Uh, uh, so, you know, we're, we're fans of games, um, turn-based strategy games like um, XCOM, uh, even 4X games like Civilization or Galactic Civilization, um, uh, or other turn-based ones like Expeditions Conquistador. That's a great little hidden gem out there if no one's ever played it. Um, and uh, uh, all of those are great. It's pretty easy to get a turn-based strategy game with a fantasy setting, and there's a couple modern ones uh, like Jagged Alliance or XCOM. Um, and the four X games that sort of uh, deal with fleets of ships often really skimp out on the combat because they're more about empire management, yes. you know, uh, explore. So it seemed like um, I couldn't find a title that really focused on like really good turn-based combat with spaceships. There's a couple out there, but they're pretty shallow, like Sid Meier's Starships. Um, I had a lot of hope for that game. Uh, it's very beautiful, but it's it's really, really shallow in the mechanics. So uh, uh, we just wanted to play something uh, that was in-depth um, that you can get in sort of a fantasy or a modern setting. But we wanted it for, um, for sci-fi. Uh, and because no one else had made one, we decided to. Yeah, and I think that's so true. I mean, I recently took a look at uh, Endless Space 2, which is currently in early access. And I absolutely loved that game, and I loved the the setting and sci-fi setting, and the, I loved the empire building. But what my biggest complaint of the endless space games is the fact that you don't do anything in combat. And I was like, if they had just added some turn-based strategy in that combat, that would have been a fantastic game. And I've always liked the idea of turn-based strategy with ships rather than individual characters. So tell people a little bit about the core combat itself yeah sure so uh we we tried to make the combat flow um uh, very very smoothly so the the game sort of scales at first you're only playing with a couple of ships say maybe half a dozen ships on half a dozen ships but it can scale up to massive engagements of like 30 ships on 30 ships so uh we needed a system where you, uh, where it's very intuitive and you sort of progress through the ships very fast. Um, so there is a, a randomized initiative uh, base system, so you control just one ship at a time, um, and that's randomized each round. Um, and uh, uh, the faster ships are normally like the fighters and the light frigates and stuff like that. And normally the bigger destroyers and battle cruisers go slower. Um, every ship. Uh, uh, gets a number of move actions and and attack actions that can be used to like fire the main guns or use an ability. Um, and so uh, when you get a ship, uh, uh, you can move several times and then shoot several times uh, and then pl play passes uh, ship to ship to ship. Um, and one of the reasons why we have move actions and attack actions is uh, uh, earlier on we had sort of an action point system. And with an action point system, uh, everyone spent all of their actions on attacking. Uh, and so engagements didn't really feel like engagements because everyone would move in range and then sit still and just fire the entire time. Right. So we sort of took another look at the system. Um, and, and there were people that really liked a hit-and-run play style, especially with like the different fighter squadrons. So they wanted to be able to move in, attack a bunch, and then move back out. And that was how a system of multiple move actions combined with multiple attack actions uh, uh, came about.
That's good. I mean, I really like the system that you have in place, especially with movement being separate from attack, because I felt like it was a lot more realistic in the sense that, you know, space engagements, you wouldn't stand still. You would move around and circle the enemy. And I, I, I enjoyed that. And it, I felt that it helped the game become more fast paced and feel more fluid rather than very static. One thing I was surprised by, though, was the cover system. Because I was like, this is space, and there's a cover system. Why did you put a cover system in there? Yeah, so um, uh, part of that is uh, uh, because we are inspired by games like XCOM, where cover matters a lot. Uh, but really how the cover system got developed is just that when we when we had open space, that was maybe more realistic, but slightly less fun. Um, uh, you know, people really like to be able to... Uh, uh, move around and take advantage of terrain. Early on, the only thing that, that had cover were giant planets, which were just sort of like on the edges. Um, and what I discovered watching people play is that they would cluster around the planets just to get that. Right. Um, so we decided to, uh, while it is space, it is very cluttered space to a certain amount. We actually have terrain and we have destructible terrain um, in the forms of asteroids or junk fields or or landmines, or, well, not landmines, but space mines, you know. Um, uh, there's a variety of stuff out there. Uh, and and that was really quite a challenge to write an AI that could take advantage of that. Um, it's very easy to write an AI that knows how to shoot in empty space. It's a completely different thing to give it, like, a waiting algorithm where it needs to know to go into cover and get around your cover and take the right shot and and handle like the rock paper scissors of how the different weapons work against the different armors. Um, so uh, I'm I'm very proud of what uh, of what we've ended up with though. Yeah, I mean, so far the the preview build was looking really good, and I was it it helped I think with having the cover system, having like the asteroid fields and the minefields. It helped add just that extra layer of tactical depth to the game thus far. I think, like you say, I think uh, uh, just an empty blank map would have been problematic um especially for longevity and replayability can you tell us a little bit about the ships themselves because there's over 35 ships is that right yeah there are um and those are split across uh three and a half different factions um so uh the ships are divided into into classes so there's like fighters and escorts and capital ships and each of those have have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, so each ship uh, uh, has has its own sort of unique profile. Um, it's uh, what its weapons loadout is, what its abilities are, um, how how many move actions it gets versus how many attack actions it gets, um, and then the class of ship that it is. Uh, uh, again, sort of. Um, uh, that defines the armor it has and how much damage it takes from different kinds of weapons because uh, uh, like a big, slow, giant beam, uh, 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 an anti-capital ship beam that is designed to knock out space stations or capital ships, it's pretty easy for a little fighter to fly away for, uh, from it. Whereas uh, like really rapid fire pulse lasers or something like that, they might be very good at hitting lighter fighters. Uh, but they don't really do much. They they barely scratch the armor of the larger capital ships. Um, and then we also have uh, their aliens, um, uh, whose mechanics are a little bit different. Uh, uh, but it's uh, I still believe it's pretty intuitive to control the aliens, just like it is to control the the human ships. Right. And there's going to be two single two full campaigns in the final game. And how? Are they going to play out? Are there going to be specific missions, or and is it going to be story driven, or is it going to be a case of just set scenarios? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so this is more about the the strategy aspect of the game. Uh, the two main campaigns follow either the Federation or the Alliance. They're they're the two main factions, and there's also the pirates and the aliens that are uh, uh, that are also there. So. Um, uh, when when you play through a campaign, it has I think somewhere between 24 and 26 missions um, that are uh, sort of pre-scripted scenarios, and between each one, um, you have the ability to 
uh, uh, buff up your fleet and gain experience and add resources by taking uh, random missions. Um, so we have bounty missions and simulator missions and stuff like that. Um, so if you just want the story, you can play story mission to story mission to story mission and go all the way through the plot and see that. But if you really want to get into um, uh, expanding your fleet and, and playing some random generated missions in between, uh, I think a good way, I know I keep mentioning it, but but I'll bring up XCOM again. It's sort of, uh, you know, there there's an overarching arc of, I can't remember, 8 to 12 sort of scripted missions. And then there's a lot of, hey, a UFO popped up here. Do you want to go check it out missions? Right. Um, and it's kind of designed like that. And, and you touched on progression a little bit in terms of building up your fleet. How does the progression work in the game? Is it a case of, you know, you get access to better ships as you progress? Or can you customize individual ships to improve their loadouts? So that's a great question. Uh, we have a... Uh, a three-tiered system of advancement. First, um, every ship has a level. They start at level one. They max out at level 25. Uh, so every time that they, they fight and survive, they gain experience. And experience uh, gives them things like more hit points or, or better hit percentage. Um, then uh, there is also a tech tree. Um, and, and the tech tree uses uh, mostly one of the resources uh, there's three there's three uh, strategic resources in the game, um, but through the tech tree you can uh, unlock unlock powers for an entire class of ships. So, for instance, you might uh, uh, give plus five hit points to every fighter, or or plus five dodge to every fighter, um, or or um, plus ten shields to every capital ship, that sort of thing. Uh, and then finally, uh, what you touched on, uh, yeah. At, in the early part of the game, only several different kind of chassis are available to be built, uh, mostly the lighter escorts and the fighter squadrons. And as you progress through the story, um, there's sort of a story reason to it, but as you progress through the story, the larger ships uh, slowly become available to be purchased. So by the time you're about two-thirds through the story, um, almost every ship is unlocked to you, and at that point you've got sort of the full array. Uh, but we also don't overwhelm you with options starting out. Right, you you've got three or four ships that you can choose between starting out, and then at the end, you know, a faction's got ten more, more than ten, but you know, it's got a good chunk of ships right. to choose from. And that brings me nicely on to because I've played the preview build and I was really impressed with the single player content. One thing I was curious about is that it's not mentioned on the store page or anything like that is multiplayer. Do you guys think that you will ever implement multiplayer in the future? Uh, I will say it's an option. Um, I don't anticipate it being available at launch, but it's not impossible. Uh, the way the system is designed being very fluid, uh, if it was an I go, you go, you could have an asynchronous turn, uh, kind of a play by mail. Uh, with the way that it's set up where it's a little more action packed, you're really going to need both people to be connected. Um, and that, that leads to all sorts of problems like, uh, uh, people, you, one of the things, um, uh, we have a hot seat multiplayer uh, that I suppose I could just flip the switch on. It doesn't exist in the demo, obviously. Uh, but when you watch a hot seat game, um, people will know whether they've lost maybe halfway through. Uh, and the AI has no problem sort of grinding out the loss. But a human player quits uh, uh, pretty soon once they realize that, that they, they've really lost um, so unless you have very, very even matches that go down to the wire, uh, uh, there are some problems with just managing how uh, players behave. Uh, there's also a cost associated with servers and right. stuff like that. So um, <clears throat> it's not impossible, uh, but we're focusing on the single player game first. And, and the best I can say is maybe it will launch with multiplayer. I, I want to gauge what the interest is, and we need to figure out how we're going to design around some... Multiplayer opens up a whole different door of issues um, as a designer. Right. And speaking of the single player, you guys have a Kickstarter at the moment, which isn't f technically for the game to be... Uh, it isn't for the game to be launched, because that's coming either way. It is for the effects department, correct? Yeah, that's right. Um, so we're a small independent company. 
Um, and and as you might imagine, with such an enterprise, budgets are tight. I mean, budgets are tight at every level, right? Um, and there's a lot of stuff that is uh, uh, very cool to have, but not especially cheap to get. Um, uh, CGI movies and voice acting and stuff like that. So um, uh, we for sure have the budget and the capacity to make the base game. Um, and what we decided to do with the Kickstarter was to see how much extra polish uh, we could add. Basically, give a chance for the community to make it the best game possible before it launches. Um, but, uh, I mean, you can you can release a game without any bells and whistles. So if the Kickstarter fails, it'll be... Uh, uh, the game will look a lot more like the demo that you played. Um, and, and if the Kickstarter is successful... Uh, then there will be it'll be a lot flashier, right? Because the Kickstarter has got something like uh, six days to go. Yep. Because um, you, you guys have only asked for five thousand dollars. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's the. Uh, uh, so we have a series of stretch goals, and and five thousand is the base amount. Um, that the first set of money is actually all earmarked for voice acting. Right. If we get around to it, we've already had people ask like. Uh, uh, will the ship say yes, sir, and and whatnot? You know, like those little command prompts yes. uh, that are common in RTSs mostly. Um, we've had people express a lot of interest in that. Um, voice acting, like anything, you pay for what you get. You can get some pretty cut rate voice acting, pretty cheap. But uh, uh, if you have a pretty good looking game, which which personally I think ours is, and then you slap cheap voice acting on it, it cheapens the whole experience. Right. So we would want to hire voice actors that sounded as good as the game looks. Right. Um, which is not cheap. Uh, so, so yeah, at, at the first $5,000, what we're really looking for is voice acting. And I think even through the first $10,000, what we're really looking for is voice acting. Can you play a game like this without voice acting? Sure, but does it add to the immersion? Right. Uh, we think so. Yeah. No, that's great. Well, Christian, thank you so much for taking the time today. Everyone should go check out Ancient Frontiers Kickstarter and also the Steam Store page because I'm looking forward to this. Now, when is the game going to be released? Uh, so we're scheduled for quarter two of 2017. I don't know exactly uh, when in there. Obviously, I'd like it to be sooner rather than later, but uh, game design isn't an exact science. Uh, we've been doing this for a while, so I, I don't want to make promises that I can't keep. Um, but it should be the summer, um, uh, you know, quarter two, April through June of 2017. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.